I would suggest doing any projects will help uh, if you get comfortable uh, instead of changing lanes. For example, if you are doing in Django, instead of changing, uh, you did one easy project in Django and then you switch to no. Uh, Node.js yes, that uh, I will do one more easy project in Node.js. Yes. Instead, uh, just build on what you have learned, and then increase your level from uh, let's say level one to level two, level three, level four. Uh, that kind of project start doing. So even if you mention like easy project uh, in your first interview, uh, let's say after six months when you are sitting for the next round of interview uh, for different companies, you will have that uh, progress to show uh, in your resume, which companies usually like. So hello everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Muskan Agarwal, and today we are here with yet another interview experience. And today we have Abhishek with us, who is going to share his interview experience at Amazon. So yes, without any further ado, just let me add him to the stream. Hi Abhishek, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, hi Muskan, I'm doing great. And hello okay. uh, everyone who is watching this stream. Yes. So let's start by having a brief introduction about you so that the audience connects with you better. Okay, so I'm a 2021 graduate. Uh, I have done my computer science and engineering from uh, LNC City Nepal. After that, uh, I worked for like one year in Leotap uh, as a back end engineer. And uh, right now, uh, I have started working with Amazon uh, as an engineer. That is really great. So, can you tell about your coding journey? Like, how did you get interested in coding? Was it from school, or did you get interested in it after joining college? How is it? How has the journey been, basically? Okay, so uh, my coding journey—it's uh, not like I after I start uh, after I joined college. It's not like that. Uh, more of like uh, since I was in tenth, I was from uh, ICSC, uh, so. There we have what we call Blue J or Blue Java, what we used to call it. So from there, it kind of uh, felt more of like a home that yes, uh, in this field I can uh, we can write code and then we can also check uh, on the spot, which is quite not possible if you uh, let's uh, let's say if you do any practicals in physics or chemistry, it's quite not possible to see the uh, result on your own. But when you do programming, uh, you can just compile and see the result. So that what fascinated me at that time and I just carried it forward towards my uh, 11, 12th and then uh, after joining college also. Yeah, so being an ICS student, even I could relate, like even I did like compute, I took computer science from class 9th and then Java, Blue Jay. So it has been a part of my journey since school only. Yeah. Also, uh, coming to Amazon interview experience that this webinar is about, can you tell how many rounds did you go through and a brief uh, about each and every round that you went through? Basically? Okay. Uh, so, there were like four interview rounds. Uh, one online assessment, uh, which uh, which is common, uh, everyone has to go through. Uh, after clearing that, uh, uh, there will be four interview scheduled. Uh, two were like scheduled at one time and then after one and then after one. Uh, so it's like two plus one plus one kind of format. Uh, the two which is scheduled uh, that are supposed to happen even if you failed your first interview. So that's why I said two plus one plus one. Uh, the first two uh, were more of like technical, uh, which is uh, what they call. And third one is like managerial and fourth one is like bar razor. Uh, it is supposed to happen in this, but uh, uh, in my case, it is uh, sort of like happen in jumble type of form. Uh, my manager will ask, my managerial round was taken before my technical uh, because uh, uh, maybe some uh, bandwidth issues there. But if you take into general consideration, uh, because I have given Amazon interviews before also, so first two rounds are technical, then after that managerial, and then after that virus. So I think it depends from person to person and from interviewer to interviewer because like yeah. being an incoming Amazon intern, so like my rounds were totally different. Like uh, I had two interviews and another online assessment. So I think it depends on the role and the uh, like interviewer as well. So yep. the next thing. Yeah, yeah, continue. Yep. So uh, basically I was trying to say that um, 
uh, it mostly uh, depends on uh, on what priority basis they are hiring uh, if it's like uh, they want the uh, they want you to join as soon as possible then uh, they will they might post interviews first uh, uh, other than that they will like take their time right also the next thing i wanted to ask is uh, resume so we all know that resume is something that plays a very important role you know because it is something that reaches to the company before we even reach to the company so can you tell what all did you do in your resume that helped your resume stand out from the rest of the resumes that are there okay so boom. uh my resume has like um, uh, six sense uh, there is also one popular format on internet for overly uh, i don't remember the exact name uh, it is like um, uh, google selected uh, format kind of thing i usually uh, choose that uh, it has like six sense uh, example extra uh, uh, not extra curricular activities it's like uh, my achievements uh, there is one section uh, i was like part of team which won sis 29 2019 also so i kind of put that in achievements that uh, put a quite good impression on the interviewer uh, apart from that i also put there my uh, freelancing uh, experience because i have like one year of freelancing experience where i delivered like uh, five plus projects uh, all full stack uh, with the help of my friend um, so uh, that's it and other than that uh, i had like lots of project in my resume um, uh, if you can see i don't know i don't have in this laptop uh, but um, it has like one whole complete uh, uh, half of the page is completely dedicated to projects because uh, for initial uh, uh, for initial students uh, like us uh, there are no there are no what you can say ex uh, real experience that you can mention in your resume uh, if it is if we have been like working for like 5 years or 10 years uh, then we can mention our uh, experience but if not then uh, there only uh, that then it only boils down to two things either you can uh, showcase your interview experience what you have done uh, uh, if not then you can showcase your projects so i usually follow this kind of stuff yeah i think projects play a very important role like you can like i have seen some of the interviewers talk about uh, like few of the projects in like in the entire interview okay so can you talk a bit about the projects that you worked on and what all projects did you add in your resume okay so uh for projects i have i have done like more than 10 projects during my college time but i usually mention those which are live and already uh, i have the uh, public link with me and also uh, on my github so i usually do that uh, one is like um, uh, order management system which i did and one is like chat room uh, which i did and apart from that uh, uh, but generally uh, what i have seen uh, because i have mentioned like i have done five plus projects in freelancing uh, they uh, tend to ask questions related to that uh, uh, the projects which i have delivered uh, during those time so the projects which i wrote there uh, was like uh, the most challenging one was to create an uh, emr electronic uh, medical record which was uh, which I, which i did during covid so that was quite a uh, what you can say uh, difficult you know simple but complex task so it kind of like uh, you can solve it uh, but it takes time right so, so like Uh, is it okay if we work on simpler projects but like we are working on it from scratch but simpler projects do you recommend doing complex projects or simpler projects if we are appearing for amazon interview okay so uh, simple in the terms uh, definitely you can uh, do any kind of projects because doing projects gives you experience uh, that you will be doing in your day to day activities at amazon or let's say any pang if you are targeting or now we call it man because uh, facebook name has been changed so uh, i would suggest doing any projects will help uh, if you get comfortable uh, instead of changing lanes for example if you are doing in django instead of changing uh, you did one easy project in django and then you switch to no uh, node js that uh, i will do one more easy project in node js instead uh, just build on what you have learned 
and then increase your level from uh, let's say level 1 to level 2 level 3 level 4 uh, that kind of project start doing so even if you mention like easy project uh, in your first interview uh, let's say after 6 months when you are sitting for the next round of interview uh, for different companies you will have that um, progress to so uh, in your resume which companies usually like i totally agree with you so uh, we have discussed about projects so now it comes to data structures so in the entire process what importance did data structure play and how did you prepare for them can you talk a bit about that okay so if i talk in quantitative terms if i have to give like percentage of how important it is uh, i will say uh, data structure play very important role uh, at least in amazon which because i have given it recently and uh, one more time before uh, like 70 to 80% your interview will be around data structure and rest it may be around uh, lp we call it uh, or you can say behavioral questions or whatever you want to name it but uh, it's like uh, you call it lp uh, and then it boils down to uh, projects or any theoretical subjects or any kind of that questions so dsa is important right even i agree like for, even when i gave my amazon interview like the the initial one hour was just data structure and algorithm questions and then the last uh, 15 20 minutes he asked me questions around theory subjects and my project so yes data structures play a very important role if you are talking specifically about amazon right Right. So uh, the next thing is referral. So many people have this doubt that uh, does Amazon hire through referral or no? So can you tell us about that? Okay. So uh, uh, when I'm talking about myself, uh, I have like as I told earlier, I had given interviews before one time before also, uh, just after completing my college. uh for intensive plus ppo uh, i wasn't able to went through that was through referral uh but this time uh, it was more of like direct uh, applying through the portal so in both the cases i got the uh, call for interview so i think uh, referral yeah it does help uh, but if your resume is strong they use some kind of uh, software i think to uh, select candidates for uh, next round so i think right. resume is right i think also referral can help you maybe cross the resume selection phase or maybe the initial phases but eventually like the other rounds you have to give so yeah so the next thing is according to you what are uh, three of the most commonly mistakes that students do in an interview maybe not specific to amazon but any three of the commonly made mistakes that you did yourself or you saw your friends do okay so um i have also failed so i can uh, give you my perspective uh, uh, with what i learned from my failure is that uh, uh, keep two things in mind i don't have third thing uh, but if i get along the way while giving you this two <laughs> i can add that uh, other two things which i can tell you definitely is uh, don't under prepare yourself that uh, means you may have solved 200 questions on lead code uh, maybe all lc hard but you may still not be able to solve the question which interviewer give you and uh, in my case this time um, i had not solved more than uh, 60 or 70 questions on lead code till now uh, even after my four years of college uh, but i was able to solve all the questions that interviewer gave me and also uh, just to give you the perspective that doesn't mean i don't solve questions it's just that uh, i haven't submitted the questions on lead code that's why the number is quite less uh, but if you talk about me i have solved more than um, 400 to 500 questions uh, combined on geeks for geeks lead code uh, interview bit and then uh, course so uh, it's not like i was only doing in lead code that's why then number is less so uh, don't think like uh, uh, only solving lc hard 500 questions will get you the job uh, it's not that and second thing i will say uh, don't uh, over prepare yourself uh that means um, uh let's say if you want to give your interview uh, when interviewer asks to schedule it in let's say uh, after 15 days don't just uh undermine yourself and then think you can't give uh, prepare for a certain amount of time and then have confidence yourself that uh, you can crack uh 
because sometimes what we tend to do is just prepare for 15 days 20 days 30 days it just never ends because concepts are very vast and the topics that you can learn in those time is very vast so for you to cover everything is not possible with these two things right. correct correct i 100% agree with the point that you mentioned that the number of questions actually do not matter like when i was in my initial years so i used to think that if i'll solve you know 600 or 700 questions then i'll get selected in every company that i want but actually this is not the case even if you are solving 100 to 150 quality questions i think that is more than enough to crack any company right a quality more than quantity basically Yep, but um, uh, for that, I uh, the third thing I can tell you is that uh, just after conversing with you, the third mistake which I used to do uh, was like um, uh, I tend to prepare wrong things or what you can say my strategy was wrong at that time because um, as you are saying that uh, quantity uh, sorry quality matters over quantity uh, but uh, at what point of time in interviews it matters because. Um, Okay. uh when we talk about we are starting to prepare ourselves for interview that means uh, let's say i have just uh, uh, submitted my resume and hope and i am hoping that i will uh, get calls for interview so it will take around 2 months or 3 months to let even start any sort of assessment it happens sometimes okay. so uh, if we think of this 3 months then definitely quality questions will help you because if you look for quantity then uh, at the time of interviews you will definitely forget everything what you have learned so it's of no use uh, but at the time of giving interviews let's say your first round is today and then second round is tomorrow and then third round is day after that if you look for quality in during this times then you will definitely not be able to cover all those things which you have prepared previously so in this times uh, look for more quantity i will suggest uh, look for past 50 top 50 questions top 100 questions and try to cover as much as possible because that will kind of give you the idea about kind of questions you are going to solve in the interview i think starting early can really help a lot like yes. if a student starts from first year or second year itself then you know he, he or she can have both quality and quantity over the yes. course of four years Yes. So my last question, and this is one of my favorite question, because uh, students generally do not know how to write code in an interview. Right? Writing code on uh, code forces or lead code is very different to what you write in an interview. So can you give some suggestions, like what should we do while we are writing code in an interview? Like how should we do the entire thing? Okay. So during interviews. Um, i can suggest like don't use um, variable names like int a int b int c because it gives very long impression on interview uh, solving fast is good uh, but solving fast on the expense of code quality is very bad because the first thing any fang or uh, mang company will see is like how well you write code because writing code is like only 10 to 12 30 to 40 percent task in in this company. Even what I have experienced till now, reading code is more of a burden to you than writing code. So, so let's say you write a code and then post it to development. After three to four months, even you will not under you even you will not understand why why have you written this or why you haven't gone with other kind of approach. So the interview sees this very clearly. So. using appropriate variable names along with using appropriate function name and then uh, what you say writing your code in modular way uh, instead of like uh, dumping your whole code in one function try to decompose it into uh, different function or you better if you have time or let's say you uh, saw the interviewer ask you the question which you have already solved and you know the complete answer in order of uh, let's say the best time complexity and space complexity that it can be solved so the best thing you can do uh, is create a class uh, create instance of class and then write member methods for it and then uh, write in such a way that it's production ready so that creates a very good impression yes i think these were uh, a very important tips like whoever is watching this please keep this these points in mind while you are writing code in an interview right So these were all the questions from my side, Abhishek. Thank you so much for doing this webinar. I hope it helps a lot of students who are watching this particular webinar. Thank you so much for coming to Geeks for Geeks.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye.